Good morning cellists. Today we're going to have a look at the second minuet from the first suite and with regard to warming up I'm going to remind you of the things that we typically do which would be cello hugs without the bow, uh, could be the swoops, could be the bow waves, also, the left hand pizzicato with head movement as you cross the strings. And also that we've looked at this week, the long C where you breathe and allow it to get louder at point and back again. I've now split up some of those exercises from the original videos so that they're accessible as single items. And thank you for the feedback about that. So today, to add to our technicals for the week, we're going to have a look at a G minor arpeggio, which takes the same route as the G major in terms of moving to the, the third position, but there just is no stretch for this B flat here. And we've got a second finger B flat here. Here we go. <laughs> as previously it's useful for us to move in and out of here because we will be using this very position for the second minuet. That will be in the same location as that portion of the arpeggio. I thought we would add to this also a diminished seventh. Bach loves diminished sevenths. Uh, they're a fantastic uh, utility for being able for him to be able to move to any of actually one of eight keys in actual fact. Um, we needn't understand the, the, uh, the reasons why the theory at the moment but it's useful so we'll be doing it because they do come up in the Bach. We're going to begin on an E flat so this is first position second finger and then move to an F sharp so if you just imagine geographically where your fourth finger is here is an F natural I'm going to move to a semitone above there like this. It sounds like a minor third and you could think of it as E flat to G flat if that theory works for you. This again, E flat here, there's an F natural where I want to go a semitone beyond that to an F sharp. Once I've arrived here, we're basically looking at um, a minor third handshake, one four is a minor third, no stretch. And we'll be doing a little crab crawl across the string. If I show you without sound, you can see how it looks. And again. You can see the kind of crab sense of it in slow motion. I've got my first finger on this F sharp. My first finger moves back by stretching to a semitone back onto a C natural. Fourth finger, I close my hand now. Same again, first finger stretches back a semitone onto an F sharp. I close my hand and again to a C natural. Coming back, I stretch forward a semitone to an A. Close the hand. Stretch forward a semitone. Close the hand. Forward a semitone. And close the hand. And back to first position. Now when I talk about stretching back or forwards a semitone, obviously I mean that geographically it's a displaced semitone. So don't think of it in terms of pitch, just the feel of the hand. So all together we have. And a portion of that very particular diminished seventh will be used in towards the end of the second minuet here. So it'd be great to get that under your belts before we get to that point in the minuet. Next we're going to look at our four yard study that we're looking at this week, number six. And today we're looking at the fourth line. So again it's, the whole of this study is block chords and moving across two strings with the bow, full length bows. So we have a D major triad, one one, which we bar, 
flattened straight finger across the strings. And remember that because of the curvature um, of the bridge and the fingerboard, your first finger will feel, when it's in tune, it will feel a little bit like you're pointing up towards your face this way, in order for it to be in tune. The second bar, you just add a second finger onto the G string. Keep everything else just where it was. For those who'd like to know, that's an augmented triad. The next uh, bar, We've got E flat and B flat, so again we're barring across the string and adding a fourth finger on the D. That's E flat major arpeggio, for those who'd like to know. And then finally, back to a first finger on the C string, second on the G. We've left the fourth finger where it is for a G minor broken chord in second inversion, if you want to know. <laughs> Looking at them again in sequence, the first bar, second, now the observant of you may have seen that I preempted the barring into the third bar a quaver early. So at the end of the second bar we have this. Instead of just playing my second finger on point here, I put it across ready. So preemptive thinking means that I've got a really nice fluency into that third bar. Okay, so that line in its entirety, thinking about the bow now. number six. Now let's begin the second minuet of the first suite. This is in the tonic minor. So our tonic or keynote is G and it's obviously the suite is in G major. So when we say tonic minor we just mean G minor. And we're beginning in the third position. In actual fact we use this position extensively in this first section and there's a lovely sense of connectivity across the strings. And we want to, again, be looking at minimal finger movement as you cross the strings. So here's the first section. interested in are the movement across the string here, cross over, cross over again, first finger cross over, then I'm using my third finger on the D string for the A, then open D. Now those are in the same direction with bow stroke, nice and light but with that kind of saucer shape so that it's not too um, abrupt. We don't want it's not in character. Then we moved from the open string, gives us the opportunity to move back to first position. And again, you can see this real connected movement across the strings as we come over with the left hand, which is mimicked by the slurring and smoothness of the bow. As we get into that fourth bar, a little bit like Foyard, we're looking at then preempting the barring. So it's the third bar, at this point my first finger is going to get ready to be barred so that I can have a lovely smooth fourth bar. So third into fourth bar. Again we're looking at, if anything, a little pointing up to the face for that barring to make sure that it's a good fit and in tune. Um, <clears throat> as we come out of that bar, I've gone into second position, stretch.
stretch my third finger onto an A, bring the first finger back into closed position, and then repeat. And here, it's slightly different, we're holding that first finger down, preparing the fourth finger for a smooth transition, and again. So you really, you, the connection in the left hand will really make a difference to the legato sound. And in terms of string crossing at that point, you're sure we're having to skip a string in the middle. Nice flat bow hair. The idea is you can have a fastish stroke for the bottom D, slow the speed across the, as you rock across, and a faster stroke on the G. So we have. You can barely hear that intermittent touch of the G string as we move over to the D string. So that section again, here we have it. Okay. Voila. There's our first section of the second minuet. The second section we'll look at in the next lesson, um, it's got a lot in it, but do your preps today and you'll be well ready for tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Bye.